Jane Trigere. This is Talking Art, and we're sitting here at the Deerfield Arts Bank, continuing our conversation with local artists. Today, we have Laurie DeVault. Welcome, Laurie. Thank you, Jane. It's great to be here. So, let's find out a little bit about you. We have some of your art in front of us and behind us. And, hmm, are you local, or what brought you to this area? I am local now, but I'm not a native. I'm a California girl. I was born and raised in Southern California and then lived in the Northern and California coast for years, worked as a teacher. What kind of a teacher? Elementary school. Became discouraged uh, about California and getting so crowded and developed. And I thought, hmm, maybe New England would be nice. I was charmed by the pictures that we get of the little quaint villages and uh, I, that's true. It is yeah. beautiful here. Yeah. I mean, the pictures just show the little villages and the, the beautiful fall foliage and the cows and the pastoral scenes. They don't show anything else, of course, the calendars and oh. postcards. So I was hired to teach school in Martha's Vineyard. So I, I lived there. Then I decided to come to Amherst to work on my graduate degree. And I've been here ever since. What was your graduate degree in? Education. Uh huh. So did you get education in art as well? I did. Back then in California, if you want to be a teacher, and I did, um, uh, what you have to do is you go to school for four years and you get a four-year degree in an academic subject of your choosing. You can't major in education. Uh -huh. So you, you take education classes and then I majored in art and then you go for a fifth year and then you do your student teaching, and then at the end of the five years, you have a degree, four-year degree, mm -hmm. and a teaching credential. Uh, so was it studio art you were studying as well? I did a lot of photography. I grew up in a family. Uh, just go back a little bit to mm -hmm. my yeah, childhood. Yeah. I want to know how you started. Yes, it. yes. Uh, ever since I was small, I loved to draw. Matter of fact, I have a, one of my favorite pictures is of me as a three-year-old. Uh, standing very proudly next to a large drawing on an easel. So my family really valued art and valued my gift, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so I was always given art supplies. I was sent to special art class where I could mess about. And uh, your mother was a photographer. She she did photography. Once I was a teenager, she became involved in photography. We had a dark room. I learned how to. You had a dark oh, room. Oh yeah, yeah. We had a dark room in the house. So I learned how to develop and print at a young age and how to take pictures, and everybody in my family is quite artistic, and we had art books in the house, so I was always poring over the art books. My parents didn't believe in television, so I never had TV, so we would just create. Um, I would read, I wrote stories, I illustrated them, looked at my art books. Uh, Saul Steinberg really influenced me, this, all this line drawings, mm -hmm. and uh, Chagall, and Paul Clay, and so, I think I think I see you some see of these people. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I always loved art. I was known as being a good artist when I was a child in, in elementary school. But so it, I, it formed part of who you were. Yes, but in a way too much so because when I went to junior high and high school, my identity was so wrapped up in being a good artist, and I saw that I was not the best artist. All of a sudden, I was surrounded by the other people. I think that's not an uncommon yeah, story yeah. for any and I subject. Shrank, so I shrank back. And I wow. didn't do much art in junior high and high school. But when I went off to college and had to pick a major, I picked art. So to follow to answer your question, I did do some studio art and some painting, printmaking, jewelry, but I really loved the photography and that's what I did a lot of. Uh -huh. So let's let's uh, let's look a little bit at the photography. Should we start with that? Sure. Um, so there's a there's a calla lily, you have a card of it here. You uh, uh, Lori, you make you make a business out of it too. You turn everything <laughs> into cards, which is very smart of you. I see all of them. We've sold many of your cards here at the at the uh, Arts Bank. Um, this one here, this <laughs> there's a story behind that. <laughs> well, it goes with the chairs here. Yes. The little miniature chairs and this picture go together. Um, you were in in our show um, Chair Dreams Interpreted, and you said I don't have any chairs, can I be part of the exhibit anyway? I said, well, how? <laughs> and so you came up with this idea of making all these little chairs holding miniature versions of your art. 
And before that, though, you took photographs of the chairs. Yes, this was a lot of fun. I was, as you might recall, I was on an extended trip, and you were wanting the chair dream um, entries to come, and I didn't have anything. I thought about painting chairs, and I, saw, I could see chairs in some of my already existing paintings. Nothing quite worked out. So I had that idea, and you seemed to like it, but I didn't have any little chairs. So I was traveling through New Mexico, out in the middle of the desert, and went online and found somebody who was selling chairs. And that's a whole story, finding this lady in the middle of nowhere and stepping all over her little miniature dollhouses and chairs and various animals. And I bought a couple dozen of her little chairs. And I brought them back to a friend's house who I was staying with, who's also an artist. And I played with them one morning. And that's where the photograph comes in, because I ended up having a suicidal chair. Yes, as you see from the picture, and I'm, it must be up at this point, I just love this. And so did everybody who came to see the show. Everybody stood in front of it and gave one good laugh when they got the, 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 the picture is called Jump. <laughs> Everyone's encouraging the chair to jump. Anyway, yes, so my, my dark humor. Then. So this was, this was your dark humor. Mm -hmm. But what about the calla lilies? Well, I, just to back up a bit, I was mostly a portrait photographer off and on for years while I was also teaching school, but uh, that has not been so profitable lately. Everybody's doing digital photography themselves, taking pictures of their babies with their smartphones and online printing and so forth. So I've sort of let that go, um, but I love photography. I try to carry my Nikon with me. So recently I was in California and I was at my mother's house in Mendocino and she had calla lilies and so I took some pictures of calla lilies and I played around Color with Color and black and white. Black, black and white. You know, the, one of the beauties of digital photography is you can change. You, you don't have to use black and white film or color film. So uh, the pictures are in color originally but you can change them to black and white. And then do you paint these as I, well? I, one can. I just did it digitally. Um, I did send, I think, well, we can maybe look at a blue version the, the, of the Calla so, Lily so too. that was, now, how did, how did it come out blue? You can play around with different oh, programs. You so can use Photoshop, iPhoto. There's different ways that you can change. It's very addictive. It's very playful. It's a lot of fun. You can do anything now online with the photography. Uh -huh. it, it's, it's so wonderful. there is no blue calla lily? There is no blue calla lily. It's um, basically yeah. the same bush, maybe a couple of different blossoms, and I just played around with it. So I just thought I'd bring in some recent works. And then um, a few years ago, I did a big photography project called the Backyard Buddha Calendar, which yes. we can talk about. Yes. This one here, I'll open up one. Yes, so um, a few Oh, this is, huh, this, is, this is in winter, obviously. You can't see the Buddha. What happened, I was living somewhere else for a few years, and we had a Buddha statue on the back deck. And I became totally enthralled by this Buddha because the lighting kept changing on the Buddha. The seasons would change, and flowers, leaves, trees, the sky. It even seemed as if his expression changed. So I started photographing him throughout the week, the month, for years I photographed him. So I have hundreds of images of him. And I decided to put it together with a calendar with Buddhist quotes. And those became very popular and I sold them around the country uh, from my photography website and in local stores. So, but it, again, it was not that profitable because it cost a lot of money to make a calendar. I don't have the funds to do if mass pr printing in South Korea. That's so, right. <laughs> so, so people still write to me and ask for the Buddha calendars, but um, I have to say sorry. I, I can't do it anymore, but maybe someday. And I can also turn them into cards. It was collective copies that, that yes. made babies for you? Yes, They're wonderful they did. People. Yes. Yes. So another thing I see you do, but maybe we should do this, well, this is your calling card. Oh, my paintings. Yes. Let, Moving let's, on to paintings. Let's go, let's go to the paintings and yes. then we'll get to that. Okay. Very so, good. let's see. Some of the earlier ones are these three here. The, the, I see lots of cats. So, one, yes. is, one is quite charming. Uh, this, this red, red, yellow, yellow, blue, blue, and the white <laughs> cat. And, uh, and then something quite different next to it, which is very full. And that really 
is, is your dominant style. It's a little bit like the piece behind us. Mm -hmm. It's full of things mm -hmm. in a vertical um, setting so that uh, um, actually reminds me a little bit of Japanese pillar mm. art that's like the things that are far behind or just yes, above. Yes, it's interesting the things that emerge. Um, Could you tell us about these? Yes, I'd love to. Um, and then maybe I can also, when I'm done here, talk a little bit about how I got back into my painting because that, that's a little story there. So, so uh, you, all right, yes, go ahead. So Sorry. when I did start to paint again, which was only a few years ago, when I retired from teaching, and I, and the photography wasn't working out for the reasons I said, um, and I've always loved painting, and because of an experience I had in a workshop I took, which I'll tell you about in a few minutes, I started to paint. So the one with the white kitties, it's called I'm Here. I don't often want to title my paintings, but that one I was very comfortable t titling. And that one does seem to charm many people. I do have an influence there of the face. I, I can see Saul Steinberg coming out because he yeah. did a lot of cats with those faces. Yes. And I drew like that when I was a child. And uh, that is, has turned into prints and cards and people have been buying those. My doctor has it in <laughs> his office. And it's a style I've been moving away from but I will return to. The other one you just mentioned, where there are cats, um, but they're sort of like people too, at least the one, is this called walking the cat? So the big cat does have human legs, and that is very typical of a style I do. Very whimsical, a lot of detail. But this one is stick-figured. Uh, yes, yes, and I do have some other paintings like that. Um, uh, very simple uh, stick figures. So how did you get to this full canvas? Yes, I think it started, this would be a good time to mention the workshop I took because this was a turning point in my journey. Um, I went to Kripalu, the yoga retreat in the Berkshires, and I took a course called the Painting Experience. And what that is, is a process art approach. And in fact, you can go online to processarts.com. And the leader is Stuart Cubley. He's often the man who leads these workshops. And it's all process oriented. It's not a skills class. There's no critiquing. You're not even allowed to compliment anyone's work, which is very freeing because no one is attached to any judgment about in any way, negative or positive. And I, they give you big pieces of paper, jars of paint, and brushes, and just you just go, go at it. For five days straight, I painted. It's a lot like journaling, very much in the moment, very emotional. People are crying. Um, and Stuart walks around and he facilitates and just says, what's going on here? Tell me about it. Very freeing for me. And I did uh, these huge pictures with colors all around and shapes. And I saw things. I saw things and I brought them out. I saw trees. I saw people. I saw buildings. So I didn't plan any of it. I just, saw, I just see things and I bring them out. And that's really what the walking the cat is. I put a lot so of colors So do you start down. with the colors? Yes, I, I start, back then I was using brushes. Mm -hmm. So I start with a lot of brushwork, a lot of colors going in different uh, directions. Well, um, you said back then, what are you working, what are you using I, now? I am not picking up brushes very much, except for some fine detail work. What My recent work is now spatulas, uh -huh. scrapers, knives. I'm getting into much more textural work. Uh -huh. Um, okay, so, yeah. so, so you started with a sense of orange and yellow and green, and yes. then things were, came out. Yes, yes. I, was, I would see, oh, that's a building, that's a boat, oh, that, fate, that could be a cat there. It's not planned. Uh -huh. Very rarely do I plan. I might just feel... Well, how about over here? It's, now, this was very interesting, Jane, because I did so many villages. Um, yes, that's I, what I, Over and over and over I've done villages. I don't know why. I spent some of my childhood in Mexico in a little village, and maybe that informed me. Mm -hmm. um, and then recently, I did this painting, and all of a sudden it turned into a village again. And I, I thought, oh, here I go Is again. Is that what you call it? I then I just and I was talking to an artist friend about it. She said, why don't you title it "Return to the Village"? So I did, because here I am. The village has returned to me, really, because I didn't ask for it. These things just come to me. Uh -huh. yeah. 
So are you saying that, in, well, we'll come back to this one. Yes. Let's, let's do the early work here. So, so how about this woman over here? My woman That's quite here, different. Yes, my woman, uh, all my life I've drawn faces. I've drawn women especially. So this was very comfortable for me. I did her very quickly. I don't know who she is. Sometimes people think it's me. It is not me. But uh, she's almost like my brand. She's on my business card. She's the first thing you see on my home page, on my website. Um, people really respond to her. Um, so I just put a lot of color down on paper. I saw a face. I brought the face out very quickly. I yeah. see the background is there and mm -hmm. then the, the faces and the mm -hmm. line drawing. Yeah, so I just brought her out and added a little bit of accent. I wanted her to have an expression, you know, which comes through in the eyebrow. and um, I wanted her to have some depth. She certainly so, does. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to be doing more. And she's got More interesting people. things happening in her hair. Yes, yes. That are quite different. Yes. It's beautiful. Just, it's just all spontaneous, Jane. I, I just, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> well, I'm glad it's paid and not driving. <laughs> what about over here on the left? This okay. little one. Uh, well, let's start with the larger one over there. Okay. Because this one looks very much in the same family as the, as the one we looked at before with the orange and the green. But here you've got a different palette. It's I have many different palettes. I have many different colors. Um, this but you large really, one. You really do like this palette. I see this a lot. These these colors. Mm -hmm. This is this is where mm -hmm. you're happy. I think. The the large one is in untitled. Um, and I just a few words about titling my art. I think we had this conversation a while ago when we first met is I really feel trapped sometimes by people's demands to title my art. Um, sometimes I don't want to. So I, I do have know some what to call this. Uh, right, and I don't want to influence the viewer. Uh, so just tell me about how you produced it. So I'm going to do that. So again, it was just a layering of colors. This is where I started to branch out more with different textures, using some different scrapers, combs, uh, straight lines and curves, doing some edge work, contrasting colors. This is also the first time I used some metallic paint. So that's copper paint. Mm. And I'd like to experiment more with that. I, I did just purchase some metallic paints. Um, sometimes I look at it and I wonder if I want to do more. And sometimes the other voice says, leave it alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes I really am sure when a painting is complete. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm not so sure. Often I go back to my paintings months later. And, and work so on it. So were you, this is oils? No, no. I, I never work in oil. Oh, so this Everything is, this is, is acrylic. acrylic. Everything mm -hmm. is acrylic. I did oil how did you in choose, college. How did you choose your medium? I remembered a couple things. I remembered my college days of the smell of the oh. linseed oil and, and all the cleanup and it was so labor intensive. I guess oil paint is not so uh, odiferous now, but I, I just, I was looking at some work that I really liked of fellow artists and I asked them what their medium was. Mm -hmm. And I do that a lot. I, I use other artists a lot as a resource. Um, and I find that there's a lot of support among other artists, so mm -hmm. we give each other ideas. And I was told by many times by the artists I really like to use acrylics. And I bought acrylics and I love them. Mm. They're, they're easy to work with, they're easy cleanup, they're very forgiving. You can also, if you get the heavy body, you can build up uh, layers and textures, and it almost has a sculptural effect, mm -hmm. which I really like. Well, now that you're, so is this is this little small one in the red and gray? This little small one is, is it called the new ones. Yes, that was done in the fall, at uh, the end of 2014. That was at the Oxbow Gallery, and that one was one of my more textural ones using. Um, edges of things. I think it was a spatula, cones. I, I grab all kinds of things now uh, from around the house and from the store and yard and just anything that'll make a texture or an impression. Nothing is safe in my house. But you gave, you immediately told me the title for this one. I did. I did. So you had a sense of this having, needing a title. Yes. And, um, right, and maybe to help too with which paintings to show. I'm identifying them. But, but yes, bloodlines did come to me for that. Mm -hmm. I, th I think of bones. I saw fish bones. I saw blood. I saw fish. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And this Something little one here? This little one was done around the same time. 
And this, I've been lately wanting to experiment more with adding lines with another medium, such as an oil pastel or charcoal pencil. So I did that with this one. This was one of my, the first times I ever did it. And I was really pleased with the result. The other thing that happened with this one is I dripped paint on it. And look where the drops ended up. No. Those two <laughs> drops like that? They just, they just landed right there. Well, this is what happens to me. I just feel like things keep happening mm -hmm. that are so fortunate. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I call that meeting of our minds. Meeting of the of meeting our, of our minds. Our minds. Um, I try not to uh, worry too much about a title. If I need to title, I just pretty much do whatever comes into my mind first. Mm -hmm. And if I can't, if I'm really struggling, I don't, don't title it. Don't title no. it. Best. No. So over here, <clears throat> you use. Oh well, yeah. Some people go around with uh, business cards, or you go along with uh, a whole book. How clever. This is, this is in fact something you produce right online, right? Yes. I was really happy you discovered this. I was doing the more old-fashioned portfolio, having reproductions and a zip, zipped up portfolio and labeling things and carrying that around. And, or even carrying around original artwork like a lot of artists do. So what I do if I'm doing cold calling, you know, just walking into a gallery, which I try not to do, I'm very discreet. I usually have the portfolios in a bag that has my artwork on it or under my arm. And if I have a conversation with a person in the gallery, I will mention that I happen to have <laughs> these portfolios. And this just happened to me in California recently. And the woman said, oh, take it out. It's, it's quiet right now. So I did. And she loved my work. And one thing led to another. So. I'm now represented by the Highlight Gallery in Mendocino, California. And that's who has this painting, the somewhere there that I wasn't able to bring today. Yes. They really liked this, so they have that now on exhibit. And How big is that? Uh, 20 by 16. It's not huge. It's average. It's average. And then they have a couple others. <coughs> and they also it's have some... It's in the some family of this one, though. It's a little bit. Yes. Yes. And they also have some Zicle. Prints yes. and some greeting cards. As do we here. Yes. So, um, so which dominates now in your activity? Is it um, photography or painting? Painting. I mean, I'm, I'm always going to be a photographer. That'll never stop. So I what, see, what are you photographing I see, now? I see photographs everywhere. You still go around with your camera? Ah, yes. And of course, now I have a smartphone, an iPhone, which has pretty good resolution. I'm sort of embarrassed to be using it sometimes, but um, um, why? I because I'm because I'm a bit of a snob with photography. A photography snob? Yes, a bit. You know, I have my you know even just having the a Nikon instead of the large format you know viewfinder camera like Ansel Adams had you know, um, and then going to digital from film to digital. That was a whole other process. Um, not only the learning curve, but just attitude about uh -huh, it. Uh -huh. Like it's not, is it real photography? Right. So I had to overcome that. Is it? Uh, yes, of course. It's, it it's in the eye. It's in the eye. I it's believe. in the eye. So, and now the smartphone. And is it still photography? Yes. It's in the eye, Jane. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay. I'm just checking. I think so. I, it, it is pretty amazing. I think, I'm asking a question that I think a lot of people yeah. are asking. You know, they, 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 they come to see a photography show and there's a sense of, oh, I could do that. But, you know, it's like coming up to a Picasso and saying, oh, I could do that. Yes, but you didn't. <laughs> and, and, and you I didn't. actually have a response to that. You do? Go ahead. <laughs> is, it, is it acceptable on TV? Um, I, can, I, can sh I can moderate it. Um, <laughs> when I go to certain modern art shows, and I'm an abstract expressionist, I, I love modern art, but there are times when I do have that response, I, I have these paintings just like this in my basement, which I would never show. And there's actually a sign, <laughs> there's actually a sign, I think it's in the Museum of Fine Art, it's, um, that says, yes, we know you could have done it, but you didn't. It's actually uh -huh. printed. Uh -huh. And I want to add, I was going to, but there's a guard right there. Uh -huh. I was going to say, yes, but I wouldn't. Oh! <laughs> because, so, you know, we all have our yeah. standards. There are just some paintings that I would not show. Uh -huh. um, 
Uh, uh, Picasso is a different story. I would never say that about Picasso. I think he's amazing. Um, what were we talking about? Getting back to the original point. Well, is, is, is photography, is, is, you know, the what, smartphone. Yes. Yeah, so, so the same yeah. thing. You know, when when people look at certain art. Yes whether it's photography or not, but I think photography, a lot of people ask about that. But it's also computer art. I, I took a digital, a digital art course at Greenfield Community College, and I have computer art, beautiful art that I've done you didn't with a computer. Now that's a whole other, you know, maybe at some point, if there's a call for it, I actually do have something that could fit into the, uh, the black and white and red. Yeah, that could too, I thought about that. I do have paintings in that palette. But I also have a computer um, uh -huh. piece in uh -huh. that too oh, like that actually has words. Uh -huh. It's black and red. So speaking of black and red, it, did you make that piece of jewelry? I did not. Oh. I have done jewelry. I, I've done jewelry, it? paper marbling, stained glass pottery. There's not much I haven't done. I'd love to do welding, but I have to rein it in. I have to say no. Just focus this on is, the painting. This is your world here. This is. I need to just focus on the painting to go back to your question. And I really want to work on... Um, and how about portraits? Are, is there a chance that you might be doing that some more? Um, not portraits of any real people. Right. But okay. uh, yes, more figurative work, absolutely. Why, why, why is that so... I don't think that's my talent. I don't uh -huh. think that's my gift. Um, I've never been the kind of artist that could... Other, it's other people's gift to look at a horse or a, a farm or a landscape or a person and turn it into either looking like them or whatever. I mean, I could try. I would, it would be very abstract. Um, it's very freeing to be an abstract artist after a life of you know, conforming in so many ways, not too many ways, and pleasing others. It's really freeing to be an abstract artist where I can do whatever I want. I think that is a wonderful way to end this interview. And I, I uh, applaud you and I thank you very much for explaining it so well. I think a lot of people will understand and really get what you're saying. It's very valuable. One wonders sometimes what motivates people, and that was a very good explanation. It's a very joyful experience. Thank yeah, you, Laurie. Yeah. And Laurie DeVault was our guest today, and thank you for joining. Um, uh, you can uh, check out her website. We have it here below for you. And also, if you have some questions or comments that you want to make to me, also below you'll see um, an email address. Let me know if there's some questions that I should be asking that I'm not, or if you have some people you'd like to recommend for me to interview. We're here at the Deerfield Arts Bank. I think by the time we are seeing this, the next exhibit will be up, and that will be um, black and white and red all over. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.